one. Thou shalt be God's sons and daughters, but thou shall not enjoy them. So we're going to get sons and daughters and we will not enjoy them. Why? For they shall go into captivity. They were going to be taken and put into captivity. We would never enjoy having the children around. No, let me get to the meat of the matter. Because I say you don't, you don't remember about the transatlantic slave trade. Let me refresh your memory. Where did our ancestors come from? Because we call ourselves Africans. But which part of Africa we come from? There are over 5,000 tribes, 50, or 54 countries, and as many languages as most, over 30,000 languages in Africa. Where in Africa did we come from? Where did our forefathers come from on the continent of Africa? Where? Isn't that where they took us? They took us from the west coast of Africa on the ships. Several movies have been made about it. Several movies. But as I said, I'm sure if you see a movie like that on TV, would you watch it? You don't want to watch it, don't. You consider them having a movie about our enslavement foolishness? No, but mm. okay. So if they are showing a movie about them rounding us up in Africa, capturing us, put on chains and shackles, put upon a ship, and ship it over here. Would you be interested in watching that movie? Hmm? You'd watch it. Alright. Because guess what? It's a part of our history. Marcus Garvey, one of our National heroes said what? A people without a past is like a tree without root. Because if a tree don't have root, can that tree have life and stand up? No. So if we don't have any knowledge of our past, guess what? We are just like a dead tree. That's pretty much what he's saying. And that's how our people walk around today. There are dead trees walking around. They have no knowledge of self, no knowledge of the past, and they don't care to know. But what happened to us as a nation of people happened and the Bible prophesied it. If you don't remember, well, we are bringing it to your remembrance. So that's why we are here. Because our people have lost the way. They have forgotten who we are. Because you know what happened during slavery? When our ancestors came over here, I think they didn't know who they were. The vast majority of them knew. They knew who they, they were the Israelites. But as part of our punishment for disobeying God and going against God, God said, you're going to serve your enemies. We're going to prove it. Verse 48. Let me show you what happened when we came over here. The people that we were enslaved to are enslaved under. The Bible says they are our enemies. Let us prove it. Mm -hmm. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So God says he's going to serve the enemies in hunger. For want food, my sister. Where we get our food from as a nation of people? Where it come from? Do we manufacture or produce our own food to a large extent that we can feed everybody? Do we? We don't. And even the farmers that do try and grow some crops to sell and come to the market, come to the market and sell. Where do you think them get the seeds from to buy, to purchase those? Where do you think they get the seeds from to purchase and to grow those crops? Where? Them go to the farm store. Where the farm store get the seed from? We don't have any lab, lab here manufacturing seed. We get them from overseas. The enemy. So even if we start to do certain things on our say we are self-employed. The stuff that we are selling are what we need to generate income. We don't mind. We don't. The source is not here. We still have to go to another nation to get it. So let's read that. And it hunger, we want food, we're going to have to serve the enemies. The supermarkets, who own the vast majority of the supermarkets? Which nation are people? The wholesale. Who? The Chinese, don't. All right. The appliances that we normally buy. TV, we go right into the mall, right? Yes, so. Who own them store there? Chinese, the East Indian, the Arabs, them own them something. Not us. And if we are sell them, out them we got to forget the stuff from. But read. I 
and in thirst. What water we're going to have to serve the enemy. Them said Jamaica what? land of Udan. But guess what? Water free? Water free? You get some rain water. But can that rain water suffice you for an extended period of time? Do you have any kind of catchment facility in place to harvest that rain water? For you to get supply right short here without relying on another relying on somewhere else? No, we don't. We have to go pay NWC. Right? Babylon system. Where them get the water from? The rivers. If you notice, I don't know if you notice. Right throughout the island, a lot of the rivers, them pretty much dry. But guess what? Them, them dam the water and cut it off from us. So we can't go there easily and get water. You might live in some rural areas where you have a stream and everything, where they're not really touch. So you can't pretty much. But that's a very, very, very few that can do it. You have Mona Dam. You have Hermitage Dam, you have all these dams around. They cut off the water from us. We can't get free access to it. So we dam it up and then create NWC and pipe the water to your house. How we NWC do it? Them charge your feet. And if you don't pay the bill, what happened? No. But if Jam Jamaica have over 160 rivers and streams, you know. Why are they charging us water? No, my sister. The system. God said him get the water free. We must have it for free. Because it's a Babylon system. I don't determine everybody know. I them set up that. So we think that it is normal and it is okay for us to pay them. Alright. So them. But you see, it goes right back to the curse we're talking about. We have to rely upon them to purify the water and in turn them charge you for it. Yes. And where the technology come from? Overseas. Daddy, don't leave, don't leave, Daddy, don't leave, stay. Right. Read. Yes. And, so you're coming right back to what the Bible says. Read. And in nakedness. You close upon your back. When you put the tag, where it's a maiden wear. China. Alright. We have been a manufacturing company in Jamaica. We did, but guess what? Where the textile them come from? The machine of a sword. The machine of a sword, the thread, the needle, where it come from. Alright, so anyway you take it. So even when we had the textile companies here, guess what? The stuff that we need to run the factory on, we got them from overseas. The Bible is a true book. It's not worthless, my sister. Do you, you really consider us to be worthless? Alright, so since China and other countries are not China, why do you not? Let me tell you, sis, let me enlighten you. The stoplight, who you think invent that? A black man. The sole of your shoes, who you think invent that? A black man. The very internet where everybody uses and have on them phone. Who you think started it? A black man. Elevator, who you think? A black man. The light bulb filament. Latima, a black man. You know who get the credit for that? The air conditioning that we're having out the car in the house all over. Black people. Because, the, because, of, because we're under a curse, my sister. We can't escape it. It's a divine curse. So no matter what we do, we will never prosper as a people. Until we keep God's commandments, that's the only way. But read on. And in the want of all things. So you want a phone. You want a watch. They want a mask, a bag, everything. Education, religion. And you know in religion what them do? Them give a white Jesus. Where in the Bible can you prove this image? Him not white. Because him not, him not white because the Bible said he's a black man. But we're going, we're going to get there. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Until he have destroyed thee. So this enemy going to put a yoke of iron upon our neck until we are destroyed as a nation of people. See first, live up this. The Bible said them our enemy. You know who do this? The British. Did this to our people in Jamaica. And right now today, who you think is benefiting from what they did to us? Queen Elizabeth herself 
plus all our ginger ration on them. So when Queen, when Prince Harry him come here, the Bible say he's our enemy. He's not our friend. And when I'm asking for a simple apology, not that the apology is going to make a difference. You know, hear a word about him apologizing for what his ancestors did to us. Not a word that goes to show that these people have a particular nature and they never change. Huh? Maybe you don't know what? You're telling me Prince Harry don't know the history of his family? That's what you're telling me, sis? You're telling me he does not know that the monarchy in Britain was not built by our slave labor? He knows! They all know! Am I prince? Or am I not going to know that? They have all of these images right in the palace. All of the jewels that they have. They know because you know what, you know what sister? You know the one thing, the difference between them and us? They teach their children everything. Our people are never ever given the opportunity to learn what happened to us. That's why we don't know who we are. The prince know exactly what took place in his family history. He knows because his Parents teach him, and he's going to teach his children, and it's going to go right down. You have a precept? Bring it up. The book, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39, and verse 23. And the even shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity. The heathen are the nations. Everybody outside of the children of Israel shall know that we, the Israelites, go into captivity. The Chinese know. The East Indian know. The Arab man know, the white man know, the Africans, because we are not Africans, we are the Israelites. Africans sold Israelites, not them tell about black and black, no, two different nations of people. Because when God created man, everybody was black. You understand me? So let's read. So the heathens know, you have more on it? Read. For their iniquity, because they trespass against me, therefore, in I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. Because the heathens knows that we the heathen know we're supposed to go in captivity. So guess what? They enslave us because God put the spirit on them to do it. Because we transgress against our God. So God said, which is what we're ready in Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, because we don't keep him commandments. So let me go now back into history about the transatlantic slave trade. Because the British, the French, the Dutch, the Portuguese, all played a part in the enslavement of our people on this side. What they did, they enslaved us and they took us on ships. You know about that? Cargo slave ships. Let's prove it from the Bible. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Sis, sis, we are bringing out the Bible. We are showing that we are the Israelites. And we are under a divine curse for breaking God's commandment. Just stick around. My brother, Paul, give that, you got a flyer? Give that brother a flyer. We're teaching our people who we are according to the Bible because our people don't know. But read this. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with Shit. The Bible said the Israelites are going to go into Egypt again with ships. No, what does that really mean? Remember I asked you before about Moses delivering the Israelites out of Egypt under Pharaoh. You say you're familiar with that, right? So here Moses is now prophesying. This is after Moses took them out of Egypt, you know. But he's now saying you shall go into Egypt again another time with ships. Now let's get the understanding what that is all about. Because Egypt, according to the Bible, has a meaning. Now let's see what it's talking about. The book of Deuteronomy, listen, chapter 5, listen, brother, listen. and verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Remember, Moses took them out of the land of Egypt. But hear what God called Egypt. From the house of bondage. Egypt is what? House of bondage. What's another word for bondage? Yeah. Give me another word. Start with S. What's another word for bondage, my brother? Slavery. You hear the one? You hear the sister say? Slavery. Bondage. Because when the children of Israel were in Egypt, 
they were in bondage they were in slaves they were enslaved which made them slaves so God says I'm going to put you back in that very same condition again but this time you're going to be sent on ships read it from the top again the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again God is going to bring the Israelites into slavery again how? with ships lift up the sign here with ships oh it didn't did upon that yeah bring up that one I don't want it more visible it says you shall go into slavery again with ships look at the image we were packed like sardines at the bottom of the boat you defecated you urinated women on a menstrual right there having children delivering children right there why should we forget this history we bury this and we don't want to remember but the bible says god command us to remember the atrocity that happened to us why well, we need to understand why it happened because we're under divine curse look at this can look at the condition can you imagine being side by side We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, 